Every great tragedy starts with a hero, and the hero of this story, at least at first, was certainly John Swan. Sometime in late 2018, I was messaged by a small creator with less than 100 followers on Twitter, telling me that he was a fan of my work and that he was hoping I would be able to check out one of his videos. Well, I did, and to my surprise, the video didn't have many of the typical hallmarks of the average small commentary video. It didn't have poor audio quality, or a shitty webcam, or a 12-year-old making it while shoveling grease-covered popcorn down his throat. Instead, a well-spoken young Australian was explaining to me why the fan base behind some gay Korean singers was toxic. Today, I will be analyzing the K-pop group BTS, and why I liken the behavior of their fans to that of a cult. I wouldn't say I was hooked just yet, but I was certainly impressed, and I quickly came to find out that some other creators I was close with had also been messaged by the same guy. At the time, there was no way I could have known that over the next two years, he would go from being one of the most promising and commercially successful faces in the community, only to piss it all away with a little white lie. This is the Ballad of John Swan. It didn't take very long for John to make very important connections within the community. He quickly developed friendships with smaller channels like Lieutenant Cobra and Cordwit, forming a circle of friends that could frequently be seen replying to each other on Twitter and conversing in group chats. Apart from just friendships, important business connections were pretty abundant as well. The Right Opinion, as I'm sure most of you know, is one of the most successful commentary channels out there, starting an impressive blow up in 2019 and only continuing to garner more success from there. With more than a million subscribers today, his audience is extremely loyal, and he's known for being someone who is simultaneously respectable for his videos and mature when handling serious situations. He tends to stay out of a lot of the drama that the community is known for. He and John became fast friends, doing a few different collaborative projects together, including one on James's channel about Onision. Throughout this segment, I want to put focus on one word in particular, evidence. To convict anyone of any crime, you need a lot of evidence. Despite his small channel size at the time, he also managed to do a collaboration with someone who would quickly become one of the fastest growing channels on this website just a short time later, Dream. Dream is someone I've talked about on my channel, about five days ago if all goes according to plan, who blew up last year for his popular speedruns of the game Minecraft. John reached out to him, managing to get his attention and even have Dream do a spot in the video. I like, I just, the reason kind of it caught me is I'm, I'm a very creative person. I, I've always my entire life and even my entire, I guess, Minecraft career or life or whatever you want to call it. But John wasn't just great at networking. He was also a talented creator. While his upload schedule was pretty inconsistent, every time he did upload, the videos were revered as some of the best in the commentary genre. His writing and his pacing made each video engaging for viewers, building narratives in each post, which made them feel much more like Netflix documentaries than amateur commentaries. Soon enough, he turned his gaze to gathering unique topics which would set him apart from the crowd. In April of 2020, he uploaded a video where he profiled Suzy Liu, a reaction channel which was making a living from stealing content, as well as filing DMCA takedowns of people who criticized her or made fun of her. Ironically enough, John's video was removed by Suzy Liu, blowing up the story on the site and giving him the opportunity to do a follow-up expose. While other people had talked about Suzy, John's videos managed to put her content into an easy-to-digest format, giving newcomers the opportunity to experience the story from beginning to end. Paired with his good timing and slick editing, the perfect story was really created. In two months, John went from 10,000 subscribers to more than 100,000, mostly from these two videos about Suzy. From here, his back catalog began blowing up as well, and his collab with Dream even received nearly 1 million views. Defying the classic one viral video wonder, John's next series was even more ambitious in scope and got him much more attention. Chris Hansen, as you probably know, was skyrocketed into mainstream popularity in the early 2000s for To Catch a Predator, where he confronted adult men who had tried to contact preteen girls for sex. Why don't you have a seat? I just need to get home. I'm not doing the show. Go ahead and take a seat. But I'm not going to do this. Take a seat right over there. 
In recent times, he's appeared on YouTube, doing interviews on a variety of predatory actors in the YouTube community, namely Onision. While his intentions seemed noble, people soon developed a lot of animosity towards Chris for a series of missteps, including taking down videos, mishandling evidence in the Onision case, and then smearing anyone who tried to criticize him. For months, people had been taking note of this. John used this as an opportunity to, once again, summarize the drama and popularize it. These videos racked up millions of hits, painting Chris as a fraud to the YouTube community, and simultaneously making John appear like a deservedly smug critic of financial charlatans. He received even more attention when a supposed employee of Chris began harassing him and doxing his family, making John seem sympathetic as well. The guy who had tried to tell the truth about a liar had been targeted with vitriol, so the audience supported him. He was by all means a victim of some pretty nefarious stuff. His YouTube channel was on top of the world, racking up more than 150,000 subscribers at this point. He also ran a successful second channel, where he could live stream to his fans and interact with them, as well as a complimentary popular Twitter account. It was this platform where his next burst in popularity and notoriety would take place, leading to his name being the most relevant it would ever be during his time online. In February of this year, John began tweeting about a video he was working on with a fellow creator, Cordwit. Cordwit is a smaller commentary channel who, as mentioned before, has been friends with John for quite some time. But this wasn't going to be just any video. The two had a particular target in mind. Since his explosion in popularity, Dream has been in a few different high-profile controversies, most notably when he was accused of cheating his way to a world record time on a Minecraft speedrun. The general consensus on this issue from the community was that Dream did cheat and lie about it after the fact to cover it up. And while there have been a lot of smaller criticisms of Dream, no one had really taken the John Swan formula at the time, putting all of the criticism together into one marketable piece of content. So, the two began work behind the scenes, tweeting different pieces of media as they found them. On February 14th, John Swan tweeted out a clip with the caption, Holy shit, Dream is like an actual douchebag. The clip itself is cut from the official podcast and the Scuffed podcast, where commentary YouTuber Critical discusses how Dream said that he used to promise people shoutouts before he had any following in exchange for Discord roles. Well, I was just saying, I, I didn't, I thought Kai didn't believe he had an ego. I was just going to say, because I went on a podcast with him and he was telling this story about like, he always knew he was going to blow up and his advice to up and comers was to be super confident to the point of arrogance. This post got a lot of attention from fellow YouTubers and fans alike. They saw it as yet more proof that Dream was a braggadocious, egotistical asshole. What most people didn't expect was a pretty swift response from Dream, albeit in a place you may not expect it. Having seen the clip cross-posted to a small subreddit, Dream replied giving his own explanation of how he felt about John Swan. A while back, after I interviewed with him for a Minecraft documentary, he changed his profile picture and name on Discord to mine and started DMing people pretending to be me. He sent people the n-word and a lot of other stuff, as well as said sexual stuff while claiming that it was me, and giving his main Twitter to vouch, where he would then, from his main Twitter, vouch saying that it was me and that we were amazing friends and link the documentary to prove it. Once I confronted him about it, he said that his friend had hacked his accounts and done it. I didn't reply to him and unfollowed him, and I don't think he is super fond of me since then. This is definitely a serious claim for someone like John Swan. The guy has a very squeaky clean image and seeks to brand himself as morally righteous, brand friendly. For someone like let's say me, it seems typical. People would expect me to do some dumb shit like this. But to John's audience, it seems out of character to be acting like some troll on Discord, and very few would think that he would ever lie about it after the fact. The accusation was quickly met with a thread from John Swan on the same day, where he further escalated the drama as a whole. Here, he claimed that what Dream was saying was categorically false. He says that Dream is doing this in an attempt to smear his credibility by pushing this narrative, and that instead of him saying these things, a 12-year-old family friend of his had gained access to his accounts and done all of the trolling. Back probably a year ago, I was visiting some family friends. One of the guys I was talking to was much younger than me and wanted to know about YouTube and what I did to make videos. Since I didn't have my PC with me, I logged into Discord on his laptop and showed him some things that I had screenshotted and sent other people. Before I left, I foolishly didn't log out of my account. He decided it would be a good idea to start trolling on my account with his friends, and used an alt account as well as my account to have conversations with about three different people. He had used an alt account, changed its name and profile picture 
started to dream and started saying some really strange stuff. It was like 12 year old humor. I was told the N word was said but I have seen no evidence of that. But I did find convos about a Minecraft sex mod and other weird shit. As soon as I found out about it I logged out of my discord on all accounts and called up the parents of the guy who was involved. I spoke to him and explained to him how this stuff could have great impacts on other people but he was young and didn't get it. But I did get him to change the account back and cease his conversations. This quickly got the attention and support of John's friends, the commentary community. People like Bo Blacks, Nicholas Diorio, Augie RFC, Jaden, Optimus, and plenty of other voices in the community came to the aid of John Swan. John had never lied before, and many of these guys were his friends. People like Bo Blacks, Nick, and Augie are my friends. At this point, I honestly expected that nothing else would come of this drama though. John had made his tweets explaining the situation, and for Dream to respond now, would only be to bring it to a larger stage. He was getting enough shit as it was, why stoke the flames? Well, he did it anyway, responding on Twitter by accusing John of doing it for attention, as well as saying that he had every reason to be suspicious given that he didn't really know John and had seen no proof of this supposed 12 year old even existing. But the escalation wasn't done yet. The next day, Dream fired up a stream on Twitch where he broadcasted his side of the drama to 300,000 people. So, evidently, either Dream was feeling very insecure, or he felt like he had a legitimate bone to pick with John Swan. In the stream, the Minecraft detective himself attempts to give his side of the story as a whole, as well as debunk John's claims that it wasn't him. For this, he questions the overall validity of the story, references the fact that John had ample motive to try and troll one of Dream's fans in particular, and then asserts that the use of similar vernacular by John and whoever this supposed troll is, was ample evidence that they were actually the same person and that John was lying. But he had no solid proof whatsoever, allowing commentary channels to pick apart his arguments and defend John. It's ridiculous to accuse someone of being completely guilty when all you have is that he says, Dream was taken. Yup. Yup. Keep that in mind. Now, what would you say? I mean, would you say yes, yep, would you say yup? I mean, maybe. I have never, as far as I know, said yup in my entire life. I rest my case. After all, innocent until proven guilty, right? John Swan went on to defend himself in a few different ways, not only by tweeting about the situation, but also by releasing a 13-page Google document, where he went over his side and denied that he had ever been involved in trolling of any kind. Innocent until proven guilty. That is a phrase that has lost a lot of significance as of recent. It seems people disregard it entirely in favor of passing judgment based on circumstantial evidence. But who can really blame people when the evidence is presented without proper knowledge or context? He knows how it feels to have the whole community call him a liar, but he can't even entertain the possibility that my side of events are legitimate. I would say that my version of events is plausible, but you can make up your own mind on that. I think this all came down to a misunderstanding on Dream and I's part. And I hope that we can both learn from this going forward. Dream had lied before. Clearly, why wouldn't he do it again? Especially if John was going to be critical of him. We know that the guy likes to protect his image. And John, he never said the N-word to this supposed fan. He never said sexual stuff to him. It was this 12-year-old. Dumb, sure, but not malicious. There really was no definitive evidence either way. Viewers were left to decide the truth based on whoever they liked more. And for John's friends, it was obviously John. After all, they had no reason to think that he would lie about something like this. The burden of proof was on the accuser, Dream, and he had no solid sign of it. Meanwhile, John was known for exposing liars and con men. Why would he destroy himself by lying about something as trivial as trolling on Discord? While all of this was going down, I had been on break from the internet because of my own controversy. Behind the scenes, I had been making video after video in preparation for my return to YouTube. In the public eye, I had disappeared without a trace. I kept tabs on the drama of the day, it's part of my job, and the John Swan story in particular was really interesting to me. The reason? I did not believe him. I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone outside of Dream's sycophantic 12 year old audience who actually thought that Detective Dream had made a ton of good arguments in his stream. He wasn't unjustified in not believing John, but his current public justifications for such were extremely weak. I didn't believe John for a different reason. I didn't know John Swan super well. I'd struggle to even call us friends. We spoke here and there on YouTube related stuff, but we didn't really have a lot in common and I never really felt like he was a guy I would get along with super well. That being said, I did know that John liked to fuck around on Discord, in particular with his friend Lieutenant Cobra. Cobra is a YouTuber mostly known in the community. I'd argue not for his videos, but instead for being an absolute Discord degenerate. To put it simply, 
He likes to do a little trolling, especially towards smaller channels who are known for making fools of themselves. John was very much in the same boat. In one DM between the Dream fan that was being messed with and Lieutenant Cobra, we see the kid saying that he wants to be seen as professional. In the conversation between John and him, when he claims that his account was being commandeered by the 12 year old, we see the John Swan account use the word professional towards him in a mocking way. So clearly whoever this was had talked to Cobra about this specifically. The supposed trolling also would have happened in December of 2019, while the creation date of the account John claimed that the 12 year old had made exclusively for the purpose of fucking with him was months earlier. To add on top of this, the night before all of the drama began, Cobra had tweeted about how he had Twitter on the ropes as well as cheeky replies where he alludes to something he cannot say. Cobra can frequently be seen tweeting Breaking Bad memes, and at one point, the profile of the troll account was also a Breaking Bad meme. To me, it was so obvious that John and Cobra were just fucking with this kid, and I told several people who had defended John at the time about what I had found. While they acknowledged that it looked very weird, they weren't willing to say that John was guilty or that he had lied. I sent a message to Lieutenant Cobra at the time, simply saying, it was you. He denied the allegations, and I almost believed it. And I admit, it's kind of hard to believe that John Swan would lie on such a large scale about something so stupid and petty. But I'd be lying if I said that the I told you so just a few days later didn't feel really good. On the night of February 26th, I hopped on Discord to join a call with a few friends of mine. A few minutes later, one of them informed me that they had received a claim from another YouTuber, one with a large channel, who would have no reason to lie about this situation, that John Swan had lied about everything. There was no 12 year old, he had made it all up. While this claim wasn't definitive proof that he was guilty, the screenshot they provided soon thereafter was enough for me to believe that the person was telling the truth. So, I messaged fellow creators Nicholas Diorio and Augie RFC, hopping in a Discord call with them to explain the information I had received. From there, Nick went on to question John about what had happened, already believing that John had lied about the entire situation, but wanting to see if John would finally confess. He was then fed falsehoods again over DMs, before Nick managed to get Swan in a call to talk to him about the situation. John initially denied the allegations again, before starting to back down and saying over and over again to Nick, if you know, you know. If you know the answer, then you know the answer. So you did it! That's what I'm gonna say. I, I, I... John, come on! I'm not gonna... <sighs> No, I'm not. I don't know. Who knows? If you know the answer, you know the answer. That's all. Are you, like, the slightest bit worried? No, not really. This was then followed by the statement from him that he wasn't really worried about the truth getting out because the only person who knew for sure would never leak it. Um... But that doesn't really matter because what matters is where it started and, uh, if that person isn't gonna come forward with anything, then it doesn't really matter. I mean... Shitty screenshots coming from third hand doesn't mean a thing. Nick then left the call and made a Twitter thread about the situation. John called him back, telling him that Nick had handled it poorly and it never needed to be made public. It is worth noting that later in the call, John does say that he felt bad about what had happened, although I'm not sure it matters too much when he let his friends and the rest of the community defend him over what were pretty flagrant lies, not to mention causing all of them to unintentionally slander Dream in the open. John Swan's public apology, posted shortly thereafter, was framed as him taking accountability. But, as many pointed out, he only seemed to want to hold himself accountable once he was caught, more than a year after that little white lie started. In the apology, he claims that the lie was a result of a panic. While I admit this seems plausible a year ago when he was talking to Dream directly, he was the one who decided to blow up the relatively irrelevant Reddit post in the first place. Not only to defend himself, but also to claim that he was being smeared that Dream was trying to destroy his credibility. As it got bigger and bigger, he bragged about the situation, gloating over the fact that he was uncancelable and that he had been gaining followers off of the attention he received. He posted a Twitter thread, a document, and unreleased audiobook, post after post after post, all complete bullshit, all built on the fact that he thought he would be able to get away with it. He clearly saw Dream acknowledging him again publicly as a way to grow his own image. After all, the only guy who had him confessing would never leak it or tell anyone, or so he thought. That night, as word spread of the truth of the situation, John deactivated his Twitter and left the public eye. As I'm writing this, the events that transpired leading to me making this video feel almost surreal. I never thought any definitive proof of John lying would come out, and in that way it feels nice to be vindicated to my friends, if only to wipe that smug smile off his face. 
Turkey Tom sniffed your shit out from a mile away. He did. So, what have you got to say about that? But that little rush of dopamine is immediately met by the reminder of the reality of this situation. John Swan is one of the most talented creators that the community has seen. His writing and editing are pretty damn good, and he certainly knows how to craft a narrative to make it digestible for a larger audience. That's probably his best talent. Some of the visuals in his content are also extremely impressive, and I've often heard fellow creators lamenting over his clear prowess as a visual artist. Sadly, this tale exposes an unfortunate aspect of e-celebritydom, which we've seen people fall into time and time again. I've lied. Hell, I've told big lies in my life. I've cheated, but those lies were out of insecurity or wanting to hide the truth from people in, in my personal life. Behind the scenes, John Swan didn't just lie to a friend, he didn't just lie to a fellow creator. Had that been the case, I don't think anyone would have cared. No, he lied to his audience. He lied to his friends. He lied to his business partners. And in the process, he risked their reputations with his own. He sacrificed his personal relationships and gambled it all for the sake of his image. He didn't want to be seen as the guy who pretends to be other YouTubers. He wanted to be seen as the professional John Swan, the virtuous John Swan. And I don't know if he's a bad guy, but that image of him was a lie. The reason why his friend, Cobra, barely got any shit for this is because he's never built himself up to be anything that isn't in the public eye. What you see is what you get. John wasn't upfront about that, and in the process, he destroyed his credibility. John Spawn led an entire community of people that weren't 14 and K-pop stands to believe that this guy was full of it. He weaponized us, effectively. He weaponized Nick, Tipster, me, Optimus, Boblax. I'm confident that John will be back. He spent a lot of time on YouTube, and I doubt he's ready to give up just yet. I don't know where his channel will go. I honestly don't give a shit. What I do know is that he showed all of his friends that he just isn't a guy to trust, and he isn't a guy to count on. The swan flew too close to the sun, and now he's sinking to a watery grave. Thanks for watching. I've been Turkey Tom. And until next time, oh yeah, I'm back on YouTube. Subscribe to Augie RFC. I cited Augie a lot in this video, and I like what he's doing a lot. Easily the best streamer on this website. He'll be linked in the top comment. Throw him a sub, watch his stuff. Okay, leave me alone. <laughs>